Good afternoon. My name is Jill Glover, and for over 30 years, I have been licensed as a marriage and fam family therapist and uh, a licensed professional counselor. I will say that much like Dr. Pickup, um, I'm astounded, I'm horrified at the changes in my field, at the things that we are seeing being perpetrated on children. Um, it has been completely normal sorts of practice for counselors to see little boys and girls who may present with differing kinds of personalities for their sex. We used to call that being a tomboy. Um, and it, it, we had little, little um, boys who would present as more creative. And that is absolutely normal and aligned along the line of the spectrum of what it means to be male and female. In the past few years, um, this, whole, this whole new industry, honestly, it's an industry, has sprung up um, to profit off of children. And it is abusive and it is horrifying. I hadn't heard of Mr. Younger until just a couple of years ago. And frankly, the first time I heard his story, I didn't believe it. I, I thought there is no way that there could be people in my field, um, much less medical doctors, who would actually go along with wanting to transition a little child, especially under the age of eight, and I think he was around five at the time. There is no possible way. As I did research and um, explored the issue more, I found out not only is it happening, but it is happening across the state of Texas in numbers higher than, than I would have ever guessed. We have got over 500 children um, that we know of in, um, in a hospital treatment program undergoing social transition and hormonal transition. One of, one of the current arguments is that if we do not affirm children in transitioning, as, as the previous speaker mentioned, that they will experience greater depression and perhaps even suicidal ideation. There is absolutely no research to prove that, and we, what we really suspect is that underneath there's other unresolved psychological issues that need to be addressed. And one reason we have such a high <coughs> suspicion of that is even after <coughs> surgical transition, we are still seeing these folks having higher incidences of suicide and emotional problems. And so we know that, there, that there's something else going on, and we in fact suspect that probably because of medical transition, that is contributing to higher distress. So it's actually contributing to more problems than it purports to solve. The thing that I love about House Bill 68 is that it gives children an opportunity to grow up. We know that brains do not finish developing for some until the mid-20s, 24, 25 for males. And my goodness, can you imagine doing surgery on a 14-year-old male to remove genitals and then that same young man turning 24, 25, and realizing he is permanently scarred and affected for life and will not be able to have any kind of meaningful physical relationship, much less be able to have children. It is horrific. It must be stopped. It is a product of our times. And, and I'll be perfectly honest, as a counselor, um, we didn't see this kind of thing until the advent of the internet and some of the changes that have been coming out of the entertainment industry and things coming out of the sexual ed curriculum. And the combination of those changes, I believe, has led to, frankly, what looks to me like social contagion and a fad, but it's a fad that is doing horrific damage to children in Texas and across the United States. And so I want to thank Representative Toth for his courage for his commitment to children and to families. And um, I so urge people to contact the representative and their senator. You can find out who represents you by just Googling who represents me and find that online. And you can send an email or make a phone call to your representative or senator. And I urge you to do that. And I thank you very much.